food. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a midnight snack, we all need food to survive. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. In the last 40 years, the population of Earth has doubled. There are over 7 billion of us now. And that's exponentially increased the amount of food we consume as a planet. Excuse me. Thanks, Beverly. I'll just have the special and a tea. Now, in North America alone, each one of us eats about 120 pounds of meat every year. That means we're producing nearly 86 billion pounds of red meat, poultry, and fish to meet our domestic and export demands. Outside of the U.S. and Canada, many cuisines make use of nearly every part of the entire animal. But here in America, because of our eating habits, our customs, and our culture, we only eat about 50 to 65% of a cow, a pig, or a chicken. So if you compare the parts we do eat to the parts we don't eat, that's nearly 60 billion pounds of leftover animal byproduct that we have to dispose of. And pitching this stuff in the trash can doesn't make it magically go away. That's where rendering comes in. Rendering facilities collect the byproducts, process them responsibly, and then convert them into everything from high protein ingredients for livestock feed and pet food to industrial lubricants and even biodiesel. Remember that about one third to one half of each cow, pig, chicken, and fish isn't eaten by consumers in North America. So processors rely on renderers to recycle the remaining portions and turn all that byproduct into something quite useful. So when you think about it, you could say that renderers are the world's original recyclers. Now, rendering isn't new. In fact, the practice has been around for at least 2,000 years. As far back as 130 AD, people were recycling animal byproducts to produce soap. And in the 13th century, rendering was used to make wax for candles. By the 19th century, the world had discovered just how useful all these leftovers can be for making glue, lubricants, inks, and much more. A whole new industry was formed, and the commercial practice of this kind of recycling came to be known as rendering. Over the years, the rendering process has remained essentially the same, using heat to kill bacteria in perishable animal byproducts. Today's modern technology provides the means to safely control and eliminate the bacteria, ensuring the safety of workers and the environment. Further, renderers use rigorous quality control procedures and innovative manufacturing methods to meet ever-changing federal regulations and standards. Renderers have been responsible players in the green business for more than a century, and sustainability has been and always will be at the heart of this industry. When you look at the statistics, our lives and our communities are actually improved because of rendering. How? I'm glad you asked. Because of rendering, 60 billion pounds of animal byproducts are not landfilled, burned, buried, or inappropriately dumped to wind up in our air and waterways, causing major environmental impacts in our communities. How much is 60 billion pounds? Well, that's enough to fill up the Dallas Stadium 11 times, or 1.4 million semi-trucks. Because of rendering, the burden on our landfills is much lower. Without rendering, we'd fill up all the current landfill space in just four years. Because of rendering, we have more options for high-quality protein supplements that go into livestock feed. If we didn't have rendering to provide these ingredients, we'd have to clear an additional 12 million acres. That's an area equal to the size of New Jersey, Connecticut, Delaware, and Rhode Island combined, just to grow the additional grains required to raise our livestock. Those are just a few of the positive benefits that rendering provides. And if you take rendering out of the food processing equation, we've got a lot of byproduct to deal with. Okay, so now maybe you're thinking only the big meat processing plants use rendering as a way to deal with their leftovers. And it's true that meat processors do represent a significant percentage of the total material that's rendered. But that's just one facet of the rendering industry. In North America, we eat over 25 million pounds of french fries every day. And that takes a lot of cooking oil to fry them up. Restaurants around the country are known for their secret recipe fried chicken, french fries, catfish, even fried pickles. And all that fried food creates a lot of used cooking oil. Now, while restaurants typically filter and reuse their oil, eventually its quality diminishes and it has to be replaced. So what happens to all this used oil? 
Well, renderers pick up over 2.5 billion pounds of it every year. Without renderers, restaurants would have an unending stream of grease to dispose of. But renderers collect the grease and recycle it to make many other products. It's a win-win situation. So what can you turn this used grease into? How about nutritional supplements for livestock? Renderers pick up the grease from restaurants and then make a product called yellow grease. Farmers use the yellow grease as an additive for livestock feed to provide important nutrients and improve the taste of the feed. Now the same recycling principles apply at an even more local level, like with your butcher or grocery store. Customers rely on butchers to provide the best cut of meat possible to fit whatever their culinary tastes are for the night, whether that's grilling steak or baking chicken breasts. Think about the meat trimmings your butcher has to deal with. Cutting that New York strip just right for the grill or removing the excess fat from a pork roast creates a lot of byproducts at butchers and grocery stores. Renderers pick up these trimmings too. Renderers get the product they need and butchers and stores feel good about making sure that they've done what's best for the environment, benefiting their kids and their community. Renderers provide a valuable service and convert all of this into products we can use again. That's good for the environment and good for the economy amounting to an estimated value of $5.5 billion annually in the U.S. and Canada. So what can all this byproduct actually do for us? Well, prepared to be amazed with science. Today's rendering industry has come a long way from when pioneers used tallow to make candles and wheel grease. It combines technology and research to find new ways to use animal byproducts efficiently and effectively. Now renderers can produce everything from biofuels to animal feed supplements to pharmaceuticals, and they're coming up with more uses almost every day. The majority of what's produced through rendering is animal protein meals used as dietary supplements. They're consistently high quality, safe, uniform, stable, affordable, and nutritionally dense. And the result is more efficient production of beef, veal, pork, poultry, fish, eggs, and milk. For us consumers, that means higher quality food on the table at the lowest price possible. The pet food industry also benefits, since animal proteins provide critical nutrients that are not present in vegetable-based pet food diets. And there's a big need for them. Globally, pet food products are a $55 billion industry, and the market is growing. In the U.S. and Canada alone, dog and cat food sales account for $15 billion, with exports of nearly $1 billion. Obviously, producing livestock and pet food supplements represents a large portion of the rendering industry. But there's also expanded emphasis on research, advances in technology, and innovative thinking, which leads to better ways to manage the rendering process itself, as well as breakthroughs in other areas, like creating biofuels, which are clean, renewable alternatives to petroleum fuels. As a matter of fact, animal fat-based biodiesel feedstock has a lower carbon footprint than petroleum or soybean oil-based biodiesel. The EPA has recognized that animal fat and all that recycled restaurant grease burn very cleanly and can be used as boiler fuel. Another recent advance is the capture of methane gas from their lagoons. Methane is now being recycled to power certain processes at the actual rendering plants. Rendering also supports many other products such as paints, pharmaceuticals, textiles, crayons, rubber products, and floor wax. The oleochemical industry is a major user of animal fats for the production of lubricants, soaps, and detergents, inks, personal care items, and hundreds of other products. So you can see, rendering isn't just a safe and responsible way to deal with animal leftovers. It also produces essential components for products we use every day. Beyond the commercial benefits, rendering also has a positive economic impact on local communities. Rendering facilities contribute to the tax base and support local services and infrastructure, like parks and recreation. And they contribute to the community's overall economy by offering much needed employment opportunities, particularly in rural areas. From a public utility perspective, rendering significantly reduces the solid waste communities have to deal with and the cost to manage their waste. For instance, grease causes 47% of the costly pipeline blockages in sewer systems, blockages that can cause bacteria to spread through untreated water. With all this positive information about rendering, you may be saying, what's the downside? 
Well, historically, odor emissions have been an issue. But now there are many new, effective treatment options that meet strict regulations and standards. Renderers are constantly investing in state-of-the-art equipment to continue to be good, responsible members of the communities they call home. Of course, there are still some who will improperly dispose of their animal byproducts altogether. This can cause all sorts of environmental issues, not to mention a myriad of public health problems. And while it's free, the eventual cost to the community and the environment is higher than anything imaginable. You might be thinking there are other options for disposal, such as composting, anaerobic digestion, incineration, and landfills. However, to implement them as widely as we'd need to, these options are either too difficult, too costly, too risky to the environment, or all of the above. Only rendering can deliver the solution to handling the ever-growing amount of animal byproducts in a safe, environmentally and economically friendly manner. Rendering is the sustainable solution. It's an inherent part of managing resources and a champion of the reuse platform. More importantly, rendering helps us meet the current and future needs of our communities. Choosing rendering is the right economical choice for businesses. It's the right environmental choice for communities, and it's the most sustainable choice for generations to come.